This video was brought to you by Indently.io. Learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be exploring a module called Add Exit. And it's quite a cool module that gives us some very impressive functionality for free. But practically what it does is register a function that will be executed upon normal interpreter termination. But as always, those are just some words. So let's get into some practical examples on how it actually works. So what we're going to do is create a function called end because we want to run this at the end of our script and it will return none since we're only running code. Now here we can print that this is the end of the script. And what we're going to do next is print, let's say, hello world. And as the script stands, if we were to run it like this, all we're going to get is hello world. This function had nothing to do with the script whatsoever. It didn't do anything because we did not call it. Now imagine we want this function to run always at the end of our script or at the termination of our script. Well, one option is to put this at the end of our script whenever it exits, whenever it naturally terminates and it will be run. This is the end of the script. But that's quite annoying because now you always have to keep track of that. You always need to make sure that this is running at the end of the script. And worst of all, if there's an exception, like this random exception over here, the end function won't even be called, but hello world will be. Anyway, it's time we look at the alternative using add exit. So here we can type in add exit and call dot register. So we're using this as a decorator on our function. Now let's remove that function call and the exception. And what you're going to notice when you run this script is that we're going to have our end function called automatically for us as soon as the script terminates. And what's beautiful about this is that if we encounter an exception, like we can even do it here in front of print hello world, raise exception. Even if we raise an exception, it's still going to run that function at the end of the script. And that's quite cool because now we don't ever have to worry about how to call this function at the end of our script. And we don't even have to remember to manually call it because at exit.register will take care of that for us. Although this was quite a silly example. So let's try to create another one. And I'm going to start with the decorator. So at register or at exit dot register. Then here we can create a function called a, which will return none. And what we're going to do here is print exit function a, just to keep track of that. Then we can copy all of this, paste it directly under and change this to b and this part here to b as well. And we will leave it at that. Right below that, I'm going to create my if name is equal to main check and create another simple script. And here, all we're going to do is print that we are running a script. And for fun, we're going to loop in the range of three and print the current iteration. And after each iteration, we're going to sleep for one second. And the reason I registered two functions here is because I want to show you how the ordering works here. Because now that we have two functions registered, as soon as the script terminates, which one is going to run first, A or B? So let's run it and find out or apparently I'm missing something. And that's because Z imported sleep from asyncio.streams when all I wanted to do was import sleep from time. Anyway, once we have that fixed, we can run our script. It's going to count to three or just count to two. And what you're going to notice is that it's going to call exit function B first. Then it's going to call exit function A. So you need to keep that in mind when you are registering functions. The first function you register is going to be the last one called. So if we had C, C will be called first, then B, then A. If you want A to go first, you're going to have to register B before that. And the next time we run this, it's going to call A first since A was registered after B. But let's go back to what we had earlier where we had A above B because I want to show you something else here. And that is what happens if there's an exception inside your registered function. So here we have an exception. We're just going to raise that B did something wrong. And since B is being called before A, will that end up affecting our registered functions that come after B? Well, let's find out by running the script. So zero, one, and two. And what you're going to notice is that exit function still ran. And that's because if anything goes wrong inside an exit function, it's going to raise an exception, but it's going to do so silently. We're still going to have the opportunity to fix it and it's still going to tell us what happened, but it's not going to interfere with what happens next. 
which is executing function A. So it's quite important to understand that raising an exception inside a registered function will not prevent other registered functions from executing. Also, if you ever want to unregister a function, all you have to do is call at exit dot unregister and pass in the function. So I know we just registered A, but if for whatever reason we want to unregister it, we can just pass in that function. And when we run our script, A is not going to be called because it was unregistered. Only B is going to be called. And since B raised an exception, that's all we got back. So let's remove the exception from B because the final thing I want to show you in this example is how to call a function without the decorator. I just started with the decorator because I found that to be super convenient, but in case you want to do this more dynamically, you can do so using the register method, which looks like this. So let's remove this and let's remove this. And what we're going to do is add a value to each one of them. So here we're going to put, I don't know, val of type integer and pass that down to this as well. And I'm going to register both of the functions together. So let's put it right below B at exit.register A, and we should also pass in the required argument, which is a value of type integer. So you can do so using both regular arguments and keyword arguments. For example, here we're registering A with a regular argument, but we can also do it via the keyword argument. So we can type in val equals 10. And if it has more keyword arguments, you just pass them in as follows. For example, value two would be whatever value two is. And we can just create that instead of being hypothetical which will also be of type integer. And luckily we're getting some syntax highlighting because I didn't even pass in the second function. But as soon as I do that, you'll see that this will work just fine. And maybe it's also a bit silly that I didn't print the value, so I'll just print it here and print it below as well. So value and value two, just to show you that it actually works. And when we run this, we're going to get that epic counting followed by those registered functions. So exit function B had these values here and exit function A had this value here. So again, you can choose which one you prefer. You can either use the built-in method or you can use the decorator at exit.register. Another important thing to note though is that the functions registered via this module are not called when the program is killed by a signal that is not handled by Python. For example, when a Python fatal internal error is detected, or when os.exit is called. So the Python interpreter has to exit normally. Anyway, up next, I'm going to create another small script, which should give you a good understanding on how you can use at exit. So for this example, I'm going to type in from date time, import date and time. And once again, we're going to import at exit. Or if you're only registering the function, you can even import from at exit, import register. And this time we're going to create a function called log. And we can even call this exit log to be more specific. And that's going to return none. And inside here, we're going to grab the current date and time, which will be a date and time object. And that's going to equal date and time dot now. Then we can print that the conversation ended at, and I'm going to use an F string format specifier along with the following string, percent %y percent %m and percent %d. Then behind that, percent %h colon percent %m colon percent %s. So with this date and time format specifier, we're going to get the year back, the month back and the day, and then the hour, the minute and the second. And you might be thinking, why did I write conversation ended at this time? Well, that's just because I'm going to be creating a very simple chatbot or an echo bot here. So whenever I'm done talking to the bot, I'm going to grab the log. And you can choose to add some more information here if you want, but just to keep it simple, I'm going to leave it at that. And of course we need to call at register for this to work. Now I'm going to use my if name is equal to main check as always. And inside here we can do while the user input walrus operator input you. So while this input is not empty, the while loop is going to evaluate to true. And I also want to check that it's not equal to exit, because if it is equal to exit, I want this to evaluate to false so that we can exit out of the while loop. Now I'm not saying this is the prettiest code, but I really wanted an excuse today to use the walrus operator. But with all of that, we can print echo followed by the user input. 
And once again, all this does is check whether the user input is empty or if it's not equal to exit. If it is either empty or equal to exit, this while loop will exit. But let's run the script and test it out. Test out my beautiful chatbot. Hello. I said it first. Stop copying me. All right, that was very cringe. But watch what happens when I tap on exit or when I type exit. At that point, the script is going to terminate naturally, or it's going to terminate through Python, which means that registered function is going to have the opportunity to run. And once again, if there's some sort of exception, for example, if user input equal to hack, then we can raise an exception that says that is illegal. And that's going to kill our script because we're not handling that in any way. It's going to crash our program. So now when we run this, we can say hack because we want to hack this echo bot. And what you're going to notice is that the exception is going to prematurely end our script. But even if it prematurely ended our script, our script still had the chance to run that registered function. But yeah, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. I just thought it was quite a nice piece of functionality that people should know about or should be aware exists. And I'm a huge fan of any free functionality that comes with Python. But I would love to hear what you think about this feature in the comment section down below, whether you're using it already and how you're using it. I would love to hear about that. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.